Okay guys, I've got another product review video for you tonight. Some new locomotives just came in today, hot off the press. So we're gonna take them out of the box. We're gonna check them out, look at them up close, and then eventually put in a couple of Loke pilots because it's a three engine set. Uh, one engine, I have a Loke sound already pre-installed from the factory. The other two are DC only, so they're, they're gonna get Loke pilots. But without further ado, <sighs> Union Pacific, the Heritage Fleet set of the E9M, the AVA set, number uh, engine number 951, 949, and the B unit 963. So we're going to take these out of the box and take an up close look at them in just a moment. Hi friends, my name's Steven and this is my channel Signal Up Productions where I make videos all about trains. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. While you're at it, go ahead and click that bell icon so you're notified every time I do more product reviews. Let's get into the boxes. All right, so the two unit set, the AB set, uh, comes wrapped in some shrink wrap. So we've gotta cut those two boxes apart. And then I'll pull each one of them out of the box and we'll cut the camera up close and take a much closer look at it. been wanting these locomotives for a long time so I'm real eager to uh, get to look at them. So comes in a styrofoam tray and then a typical clamshell plastic box. Just take the sleeve off. There's some uh, paperwork. liking what I see so far. So I'll address that in just a moment. But uh, I don't see any loose parts right from the get-go. Let's get them all out of the box first here. Second one. This is going to be the one with sound. This is uh, engine number 951. Well, they're, they're well packed, that's a good thing. And it looks like there's some spare parts in a little poly bag there, something to do with the pilot, I'm sure. So here's that engine. I don't see any grease or oil leaking out from the bottom of, of those. No, that's good. Set the poly bag aside for now so I don't lose that. And last but not least, 949. And later, if there is time, I'm going to match these up with my uh, with my proto throttle. And uh, I don't know how much of that I'll show in the video. I'll probably just do it because it's pretty complicated to to set these up the way that I I like to have my engine set up with the proto throttle. So that leader also comes with the a spare pilot, I'm guessing, uh, for whatever reason there. We'll find out later. All right, no oil leaking out of the bottom of those wheels. No loose parts, great. I like it. Let's get the camera up here closer and see. We'll start here at the front of engine 949 and work our way to the end of the other end of the set. All the detail that I would expect to see on a Walther's Proto engine, those are all there. Uh, they've got antennas and the horns, uh, the beacons on the roof there, they work. Uh, some grab irons, air hoses, uncoupling uh, levers. And so we come to the ends of the engine. The first thing I really st that really stands out to me is the coupler pockets here. You can see that coupler, how it uh, it droops. It's just uh, uh, has a lot of play in it, and unfortunately that uh, uh, adds some some challenges there. Uh, it does allow the couplers to navigate through sharper 
curves because of that drawbar. I'll show a little more in detail on that later. The, the body's on the long hood there that has the see-through grills, so that's a nice touch. Here we come to the other end of the set, engine 951. Identical details as the uh, 949 has, windshield wipers, uh, the roof. I love all the detail on the roof since that's the part of the model that we normally see. Uh, and the detail is really nice. And it's it's pretty sturdy too. I mean, in having the locomotive upside down while I was working on the couplers, uh, even in the foam cradle there, uh, you know, I didn't feel like I was going to break off a lot of the details there. So uh, here you see the B unit. And um, you can see the see-through uh, fans there. All the grab irons. Rivet te details really crisp. I'm not a rivet counter, so I did not count the rivets to make sure there's uh, the proper number of rivets there. And then we come down here to the, the other end of the engine. Now here on the ends of the engine, you can see we've got the, uh, the single headlight, the Hostler headlight, and that's also present on the B unit there. And those do work. And then uh, we've got uh, working... Uh, Cla uh, number boards, headlights, ditch lights, uh, and the beacon on the, the front locomotives. And then there's the, the coupler on there, uh, just as droopy as the B unit. And uh, I guess all I could really do, and I'll show you later um, where the kingpin is, but I suppose a, a bolt and a washer um, could go in there and that might be able to tighten that up a little bit. The diaphragms are nice, they're working diaphragms, they're sprung and the engines a uh, couple just close enough together that they they do touch even on uh, on straight track and um, they didn't have any issues binding going around sharp curves the underside of the locomotives they don't really have a whole lot of detail present under there there's no piping or uh, conduits or cabling or anything like that on the underside but then again you generally don't see the underside of the locomotive whenever it's on your layout so uh, that gets a pass from me. All right, so I've got the two DC only locomotives that don't have a decoder. I've got those on the track right here. You can hear the DC hum because they're on a DCC layout, so that's pretty normal. You can run uh, engines like this on a DCC layout using address 00 on your throttle. Um, it doesn't really hurt them that much to run them as long as they're moving. Uh, it's when they're sitting still like this, you hear that buzzing. That's the alternating digital signal that's making the uh, the motors hum like that. So it's not a good idea to leave them sitting on a layout like this. I'm going to be putting some low pilots in here just in a little bit. But I wanted to test out uh, to make sure that they were uh, running smoothly and uh, they move with no problem. All of their lights are coming on, which would be normal for a, a DC locomotive on, on DCC track. Uh, but they, they run very smoothly. I don't hear any grinding noise or uh, motor noise or anything like that. So I'm happy with those. And then we have the, uh, the 951 that's already got a loke sound in it. Uh, I could call that up here. And um, operate it just like a normal DCC locomotive. It has a functioning uh, rear hostler light for when the locomotive is going back without uh, anybody behind it. Uh, so we've got that. And I'll bring the camera over here to this side. Come here. I'm bring the camera right here so you guys can see. And uh, if I flip the direction, we've got the headlights and the ditch lights. They're independently controlled. I can turn off function 5 from the factory that does the ditch lights, 0 does the headlights, and I believe it was uh, 6, yeah 6 does the number boards, and you can see, hopefully you can see that the moon lights on here, the beacon does function from the factory, uh, and it's on F11, so I will probably remap a lot of those uh, to match what my other look sound locomotives are uh, uh, functioning up to. Horn and bell, no problem. And it does have the correct uh, EMD 645 non-turbocharged engine sound. 
Union Pacific rebuilt these, I believe, in the 80s, maybe the 1990s. Uh, one of you guys who are more of an expert than me could probably uh, correct me in the comments there. And um, they rebuilt them with a 645 single prime mover versus the original pair of 567 motors that were under the hood uh, as they were delivered in the 1950s. And so uh, basically under the hood, it's a GP38-2 uh, in an E9 car body. And that's why it gets the uh, model designation as an E9M, M for modified. I've heard some people label them in the rail fan community as an E38-2. So that's pretty funny. Uh, the ditch lights do not flash, which is how the prototype is. Prototype, the ditch lights do not flash. So that's, uh, I was expecting them to flash because I know a lot of modelers like flashing ditch lights even when it's not prototypical. All right, so everything uh, is looking good so far. I think I'm going to take the, um, the two uh, DC only engines, pull them off the track, uh, figure out how to take the shell off and get the decoder plugged in. So let's go into the workshop and do that now. Now, before I work on any locomotive, it's a good idea uh, to read through the um, whatever paperwork you got just to make sure there's no like uh, hidden things that you need to think about whenever you're trying to pull off one of these shells because of all of the details that come on these models today. Uh, sometimes those details are actually glued between the chassis and the shell and then you try and pull it apart and you're breaking stuff so uh, I usually look through here just to see if there's uh, anything you know on on how to do that and uh, we've got um, removal instructions um, over here oh yes of course congratulations you have just purchased one of a series of the finest running most detailed model locomotives available today. Walther's Proto, folks. You know, I've got a couple Walther's Proto's locomotives. They're okay. Um, you know, I mean, I've had some locomotives before that uh, Walther's Proto that I was expecting a little higher level detail on, and they were lacking a few, what I would call, um, expected details. Uh, but overall, they're very good locomotives. Um, I don't know that I've ever really had much issue with Walther's Proto. Uh, or mainline for that matter. I've got a lot of Walther's mainline locomotives. So uh, I'm gonna look through this and I'm gonna get started and uh, I'll just uh, let you guys watch. All right, so I'm reading through the instructions. It says conversion to DCC. Follow the instructions under, quote, removing the body. Then carefully remove the jumper, uh, plug in the decoder, uh, which is 21 pin by the way. Uh, but I'm looking for the section in here that says follow the instructions under removing the body and i'm not seeing anything with the heading removing the body authenticity performance operation walther's and then over here we have removal instructions and this just goes over removing the locomotive from the protective packaging it comes in nothing about removing the body uh, the shell from the frame so that just means i gotta just wing it now one thing I do, uh, I've got this uh, foam uh, work cradle, you know there's lots of different companies that make these, but uh, I use the uh, piece of plastic that comes in the packaging usually and lay that down as a barrier because uh, even though the foam is very soft, um, it is porous and that means that some of these details inevitably get caught in the foam and so I put the plastic down there just to avoid any of that. So I'm going to attempt the B unit first and I'm just going to start taking screws out. I didn't see anything in the instructions on exactly how to remove the shell from the frame, so I just started unscrewing screws out of the fuel tank, thinking that was it. Uh, in a minute, I'll show you that really all I had to do was uh, just slip my fingers up underneath the side of the shell, and that'll release the latches, and it'll just slide off. All right, so it looks like there were four screws that were holding the fuel tank on. I removed those, but I don't see anything underneath that I really needed to do that with. Uh, but I'll leave it off for now. And then there are four more screws around the perimeter of the body just underneath the trucks. You have to just uh, rotate the truck slightly to get to those screws. Uh, your screwdriver is not going to be able to fit directly straight down onto the screw. It'll be tilted a little bit, so just 
be gentle. Don't strip out the screw because then you're really going to be hosed. Uh, four screws and they are, uh, I'm thinking that was probably all I needed. So let's see what happens here. So then what I did here is I uh, had to pry up a little bit on the underside of the, uh, the bottom of the shell on both sides at the same time. There must be some locking tabs. Um, oh, yep, I did it. In doing that, I broke off the uh, coupler cut bar on the one side there. So apparently you need to remove the couplers while you're at it. So let me go ahead and do this side. <clears throat> it's okay. I don't like Walther's couplers anyways. I'm going to switch them out to, to KD. Um, and there it is. do this without breaking it there it is okay so the shell comes off without any attached um, wires or anything because the, uh, the LEDs for the backup lights um, are attached to the frame now, apparently that's not right <clears throat> so by removing the four screws for the body oh that's what I did wrong. Okay. Well, I'm going to know better on the next one. Apparently, all I had to do to remove the body was just pull up. Apparently, there's just some, some plastic locking tabs, and you just pull off to the side and gently shake the frame out. The four screws from under the trucks hold together the, uh, the weight, the weight on the inside there. All right, so I'm back from the programming track. Uh, I'll show you some of that later, but right now let's just you know get these engines with the decoder in there and then get on the track so I can consist and run all three together. Uh, then I'm planning on uh, pulling a long train with them just to see their pulling power. So we've got the Loke Pilot uh, set up here, and uh, when plugging in these 21-pin decoders, I want you to remember two things. Uh, a, the black header block goes up, so you want to be able to see that. You want to see that whenever you're you're plugging it in so it plugs down uh, number two if you look really really close there's a missing pin in the corner here and that missing pin lines up with the missing pin down here that's what makes it a 21 pin there's an odd number of uh, pins uh, because there's less one less than uh, the other row and that's for orientation so you want to make sure number three when you're placing these down on there make sure you're getting those pins lined up um, gently because uh, these little pins on the motherboard, they'll, they'll break really easy. Uh, so you want to get that uh, lined up well and don't force it down on there. Make sure you know that all those pins are on there. So once you do that, uh, it should just slip right down on there. Once you know you've got it lined up, a little bit of force, and you can see all the pins slide out through the top of that black header. There, that one's done. Put the shell back on. So I took the fuel tank off for no reason too. Oh well, let's see if I can get that back down on there. There, that's it. <clears throat> okay, I'll get couplers back on it in a minute. We're gonna put some KDs on there. But in the meantime, take the shell off the, uh, the other one here. Come on gently. Oh got the coupler cut bar on the other side so don't forget that you got to take the couplers off at least so um, oh well take that off there now signal up productions where we do things halfway take the coupler off that out of the way. 
and that one. But uh, and so in the lead pilot there, the coupler box does not come completely off like it did on the other. So that's inconsistent. I would want one or the other. Just pick one. Uh, let's hope there's no headlights um, that I'm breaking here. Something's hanging up here and doesn't want to come off. Well, what, is, what is going on here? Oh, it must have just been a locking tab that I didn't have all the way <clears throat> released. One thing I kept forgetting to do was remove the couplers from the coupler pockets before attempting to remove the shell from the frame. So don't make my mistake, uh, remove the couplers before removing the shell. I don't see what's, what the hang up is here. Okay, you gotta at least get the rear up and then slide the whole thing forward. So that's, that's fine. But then just empty shell, there's nothing in there but light pipes. Set that aside. We'll take a close look here. All right, so we do have a couple of uh, crew members on the inside of the uh, the cab. And we'll make one minor critique there. I've been in some E-units before. If you watch some of my previous videos, I volunteered down at a tourist rare that has a an E8, a Penzi, Penzi E8. And uh, that control stand is what you would find on an as-delivered E-unit. Uh, but I do know for a fact that the uh, control stand and the rebuilt UP models were uh, a standard AAR-2 uh, type control stand. Uh, so the, the cab interior is not exactly accurate to, uh, to the modern UP models, but it is what it is. So uh, looks like we've got the, uh, the LED light on this uh, circuit board on top for the flashing beacon. Uh, we've got the LEDs here for the lit number boards. We have the LED for the headlight and we've got two LEDs for the ditch lights. Coming back to the back side of the locomotive, looks like we've got a single LED for the rear backup light. Two wires from the trucks, two wires from the trucks here, and uh, a motherboard to accommodate the extra lights. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that jumper off and get the other load pilot plugged in. Once I had the shell off, I gently pulled the 21 pin DCC jumper off of the circuit board and then I plugged my pre-programmed look pilot decoder onto there making sure that the decoder was facing the correct way. Okay. That shell is <clears throat> back on there. All right, I'm going to put some KD couplers uh, on both these units and then um, take them out there and run them together as a trio. All right, so I'm probably taking a little bit of a risk attempting to run this trio of engines uh, with 72 Atlas cold air coal hoppers. Um, yeah, but I'm gonna attempt it. Um, I'll just take it slow. I'm just curious how many cars these engines as a three set will pull. So um, I'll just gently walk this whole train around the layout and see what happens. Worst case scenario, I uh, split it up and just run it as two separate sets.
this product review. Uh, to summarize, overall, I'm really happy with these locomotives. The detail is uh, really nice on them. And I wish the instructions were a little bit better on how to take the lid off and get the uh, decoder plugged in. But I showed you how to do that in the video, so if you buy a set, now you know. And um, I'm not real happy with how the, um, the coupler pocket is on the locomotives, how it's on that, uh, that uh, drawbar. Uh, I understand it's there to allow the locomotives to operate on them sharper radius curves, but uh, there's not really any way to circumvent those and just the way they're attached to the frame I didn't think was um, super reliable. Uh, but I did go ahead and add shelf couplers to the locomotives because I noticed because of that that droop on those uh, draw bars, no, I derailed. We'll give you a blooper in this time. <laughs> Sometimes bloopers happen. Um, a train derailed is a, uh... come on. Let's see, I think, uh... okay, we're back going now. <laughs> bloopers, I can't even record a outro without something going on, but it is what it is, and those, by the way, are Walther's Proto uh, UP passenger cars, and uh, you know here they are giving me some trouble. I'm not sure. They've always ran fine before. They did it just because you guys are watching. Back to the locomotives. Overall, I'm happy with them. I'm, you know, they were worth the wait. Uh, later, I will probably upgrade another one to sound because I think just having one sound engine um, isn't quite as powerful as I'd like it to sound when it's pulling. Uh, I was really surprised with how strong they are. Uh, you saw there earlier in the video, they were pulling 72 of the Atlas Colveyor coal hoppers. And uh, we have a, like a two and a quarter percent grade on a curve over there on that one spot there. It was slipping, but it never did stall. So I'm pleased with that. And value wise, you know, they're priced right. Competitive with uh, other super detailed locomotives on the market right now. So if you are a modern UP modeler, you probably want a set of those. Uh, I looked at Walther's already. Some of the uh, some of the options are already sold out. I think they've got a couple left of, uh, I think, the non-sound uh, of certain road numbers. So they're going to go really fast, and they always go fast. This is like the second or third time they ran the E9s with the ditch lights with the for the modern UP excursion set. Now I just wish UP would bring back their um, the actual prototype excursion set. It's been in the shop for the last like 10 or 12 years or something like that. So uh, it's been a long time since I've seen them in real life and I'd like to uh, to see that one more time at least. But now I've got a set to uh, pull my excursion train with whenever I don't feel like running the uh, 844 with it. And uh, now I just need to get a few more, I guess, passenger cars make this train a little bit longer. Uh, if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. Then leave me a comment down below and let me know what your favorite locomotive is. See you guys on the next video, bye.